But look at, look at what this thing says, 10 verse 8, Matthew 10, Matthew 10 verse 8. Jesus says, well, I guess I'll start at verse 7. And he's telling his guys as he sends them out, he says, As you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the... Good grief, don't you love this? Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils, freely you've received, freely give. You think the command to the church has changed? Now, I'm sorry, I'm getting on something else now, but I'm feeling excited about this. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead. First thing every, 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 every church member just about will say, well, are they dead? They dead, but uh, were they good people? Before they raise them, what, 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 what kind of people were they? Jesus didn't say that. He said, raise the dead. So we we all screwed up inside. The church all screwed up inside. Well, well, should we heal them? Maybe he wanted them to die. That's what they say. Well, if you died, it was God's will. You died, it was your time. Well, then how can God tell you to go raise people? It was his will and their time. That'd be crazy. Hey, I wanted them to die, but raise them. I mean, that's telling me something right there, ain't it? Jesus said, raise them, heal them. Cast out those demons. Well, you know, they brought that demon on themselves. He don't get into all that. He says, cast it out. And these are the things the church occupies their time with. Well, was it their time to die? Maybe they were supposed to get sick. Maybe that sickness brought somebody else to the Lord. Maybe if they hadn't have been sick, they'd have been able to preach and brought 30,000 to the Lord. Good grief. I mean, come on now. Maybe if they'd been blessed, 10,000 would have come and said, how'd you do that? Oh, it was the Lord. I'll take some of that. You know, it's crazy the things we reason out. You really believe that Jesus would tell his guys, hey, raise the dead, but first pray because some of them God wants dead. I'm serious. Before you go healing them all, find out if they were supposed to get sick. <laughs> you know? Some of them are lepers because they were nasty, terrible people, and we want them to stay that way. Now, you think I'm being funny, but look at what he says. Freely you were given. Freely give. Did nobody ask you? What kind of thoughts you have when you got saved? Did nobody ever ask you if you brought that sickness on yourself when you got healed? Did nobody ever ask you if the reason you got demons because you're looking at stuff you shouldn't have been looking at or gambling on junk you shouldn't have been gambling on or connected with people you shouldn't have been connected to, did they? Instead, you just got them cast out. So freely it happened to you, freely go out and minister it to all. It ain't talking about money. It's talking about grace. Come on. People are so daggum thick they can't figure anything else out. You know? He's talking about we receive gratuitously through grace. So go give. Don't ask a bunch of questions. Tell them about me and it'll work. (laughs) If they'll come to get healed, lay your hands on them. They'll believe when they're healed. When they see the dead raised, they'll fall on their knees and say, My Lord and my God, Jesus, you're the only one that can do that. Freely it came, freely give. Now it includes everything. It's money, it's food, it's time, it's your house, give it. He's not, however, saying as some people would preach, take your kid's house and give it to somebody else. No. Because what else? The Bible also says he who denies the needs of his family is worse than an infidel. So he can't be telling you that. It can't be saying the preacher ought to give up everything and leave his wife and kids out in the cold because he'd be worse than an infidel. How can you be preaching to serve in God and be an infidel at the same worse than an infidel at the same time? People either go too far this way or too far that way sometimes. We ought to just practice just kind of staying in the middle. You know? That's why we, we teach tongues at this church. Everybody out there thinks all we do is pray in tongues. I don't, you know. We don't ever preach the word. We don't ever preach. We just, them folks just pray in tongues all the time, you know. You come into church, you, you don't ever hardly see anybody praying in tongues. Well, we fully believe in it. We just believe in it, what I consider, you know, right down the middle. It's biblical. It's true. It's a blessing. 
but you don't go crazy with it. You know, you just do like you spo- Good grief. What if everybody, you know, just do what you're supposed to do, right? Amen. It's funny. So the big deal is a lot of people, I think, have heard this verse and they say, oh, freely give, freely you receive, so freely give. Well, that means the preacher ought to do everything for free. No, it ain't got nothing to do with him. It's talking about the spirit with which these things are given, the healing, the casting out, you know, the deliverance, the cleansing, all of those things. You receive them for free. You can't pay God for them. They come by faith and they're given by grace, which is a free gift that you didn't earn. Right? What he's saying. Now look, just to show you how much of an abominable failure that thought process is in terms of this, look at the very next thing, the very next sentence in this line of language here. Freely you receive, freely give. Then verse 9. Then he starts talking about what they should do. Right? Provide neither gold nor silver, nor brass in your purses, nor a scrip, which is like a leather satchel they carry their stuff in, or a wallet, for your journey, neither two coats or shoes. All right? For the workman is worthy of his meat. Now, he went from saying, freely give, freely you've received, freely give, and then Jesus tells his employees. You probably never heard it put that way. Jesus tells his employees, you don't need to worry about bringing your own money. What did he say? Don't provide gold. Don't bring your silver. Don't bring you another set of clothes. You won't need your wallet. Y'all, that's the same thing they said to me when I went to work with Federated Insurance. We're taking you to training. We're going to pay for your food. We're going to put you up. Transportation's on us. Don't worry about it. We got everything. You know why? Because I was employed by them. And it's the same thing Jesus is telling his 12 disciples. I'm here. You're on my payroll. When I send you somewhere, it's covered. You go in faith. I got this. Now, I will suggest to you that if many people in the church had ever had employees, they'd understand this concept. That's exactly what you tell them when you hire Josh. Oh, that's all right. We're going to pay you. No, no, don't worry about it. If you have to buy something for the office or something, we'll pay you back. That's the way this stuff works. They don't ask you to bring your own desk up there. They give you one. That's the way it works. You understand that? Now, some people employ themselves. And they charge enough so they can get their own desk. You understand that, right? That's how this works. But in this particular case, Jesus' 12 are his employees. All right? and everybody's heard, freely you have received, so freely give. But the problem is that almost nobody has heard this. Now, take your purse, your script, etc. You ever heard that? Come on, I'm going to preach the other half now. The first half was when the twelve were working for Jesus. But right before he went to the cross in Luke 22, he told him, he said, Now, get your purse. Get your script. Get you a sword. That's what he told them. Now, people don't know that part. Because they don't know as, well, I think Paul Harvey, he was the guy... The rest of the story. Everybody knows half the story. When Jesus walked in ministry in flesh on the earth, the men that walked and lived with him and their wives and their children were all under his employ. Everywhere they went, he provided food, he provided housing, he paid for the wives. Wives did not work back then. Okay? They had been fishermen, they had been paying for all those things. When he said, come and follow me, he hired them. When he said, come and follow me, he didn't tell them, you're fixing to become broke and you're going to throw your family out, y'all. That's, that's ungodly. The Bible teaches against that. So he couldn't have. That's what most people want you to think. But he couldn't have done that. That's against the law. A parent had to take care of their children. That's against the law of Moses. It says, if you don't provide for your family, you're worse than an infidel. So Jesus would have already sinned right then and not been clean to provide for your sins. See, people don't tell you this. They want you to think you're supposed to be broke and the church ought to be broke and everybody ought to just, just wait till you get to heaven. Just, just crawl around until you get to heaven. But God said all the good things are for the church. He said they're all mine. 
All right? He said, the blessing of the Lord maketh rich, and he adds no sorrow with it. So where does sorrow come from? The devil himself. And the church believes it and eats it and drinks it all the time, thinking it's from God, because the devil wants you to think that every bad thing comes from God. But it's not light, it's darkness. Amen? Amen.